Hi, my name is Julie Pritchard, and I'll be hosting these recorded discussions weekly here on my IGTV channel. Rather than hosting a live call, if I pre-record the information, I can add graphics and closed captions so that everyone can access this content rather than rely on Instagram's free captioning, which most of the time is unreliable. To submit your questions for future recordings, please tap my name and visit the submission form in my profile here. Today, I'm going to talk about composition. A lot of people have written in requesting information on this topic. I first want to say that I cannot possibly cover the entire topic in one of these quick videos, but I am always open to discuss these topics more in depth and to your specific needs in any of my online workshops. All students in my online workshops have my thorough daily support in our private group. The workshops I offer are a tremendous value for that reason alone. So in my process, I don't start and stop thinking about composition at any time. I've built a solid composition foundation by painting a lot of paintings over the span of 13 years. I can't emphasize how important it is for you to practice and to make mistakes and to correct them. There is so much that you can learn from turning a painting around when things go south. Having said that, I don't think that a better artist really understands composition. I think the better artist understands how to correct and build a composition while staying loose and organic in your movements. Staying loose and keeping these few tips in mind will help you better develop your creative voice rather than someone else's. And I honestly think that is when you start making great paintings. My last reel touched in 30 seconds how I most think about composition when I paint. First, I always think about color. I am constantly learning in my new Expanding on Color online workshop, and we are learning how to create better paint mixes. This is helping me with the first point a lot. When I'm using color, I never place the brightest area in my artwork on the edge of a painting. If a viewer's eye hits the edge of your art because it is attracted to bright white that you place there, for example, it will fall right off the right or the left and travel on to the next painting in the gallery. For that reason, I always surround the brightest spots in my painting with a darker tone. The second point I am always thinking about is anchoring elements. I never place a mark, a painted shape, or pattern floating in the center of my art. I connect everything I place into a painting to the edge to anchor it. This goes the same for if you paint a house, or if you paint a lion, or if you are painting a rainbow. You wouldn't place it directly in the center of your composition. Shapes that are not anchored to the edge of the painting seem like they're floating like ghosts. I like to make my paintings as complex as possible and layering in line and color help incorporate the ghosts into the painting rather than see them floating there in the center. Finally, I always think about contrast. Contrast is attractive and it calls the eye to it. If I am painting, I use my color mixing knowledge to mix colors in varying levels of contrast so that some areas of the painting are brought forward. When things are too noisy or crowded, I use visual layering to push them back. Less is more in a painting, I think, and compositions with space for the eye to rest when visiting are really nice. Support artists. If you enjoy my content, please like and comment and share my page with your friends. If you are in the position to do so, please consider purchasing an original or an online workshop. Tap my name and check out my links. I'd love to hear from you there. Thanks everybody. I'll see you next time.